Mm -hmm. Hello, and welcome back to More Moss to the People, the place for cool conversations with beautiful and exceptional human beings like my guest today, Jen Franco, one of my oldest and dearest friends. Girl, we go back. So we far go. back. <laughs> so far back to the early 90s. I know. Which... It's so weird that we were like, oh. you know, such babies. I mean, we're only 23 mm. now. And so it's... <laughs> oh my God, that's so true. <laughs> How could we have known each other then? <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. yes, my girl. So here we are today talking about a topic that I am so interested in and you are a whiz kid at. So mm. I wanted to invite you to have a chat with me today and whomever is listening to this conversation about a tool called the Enneagram. Mm -hmm. um, if you would like to, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell me a little bit about, tell us about who you are right now at this point in your life. Sure. <laughs> uh, my name is Jen Franco and I am, um, gosh, that's a big question. Mm -hmm. I am, uh, I am a Christ follower and my husband and I, um, have a very blessed life, um, that we mm -hmm. just are humbled by and grateful for. Mm -hmm. And, um, we get, I get to have a lot of wonderful, beautiful people in my life, my family, our family, mm -hmm. and our extended friends that are in our lives from way back when, mm -hmm. uh, all the way up till gosh, I don't know, 20 minutes ago. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but I am, um, just, I think I'm just at a point in my life and I, you know, this, but I'll share, I'm just, I'm kind of at a point in my life where, um, it's precious and mm -hmm. time really matters and people in your life and love really matters. And so I want to be much more intentional in this last half of my life. Well, mm. That's what I'll call it. The last mm. half of my life, much more intentional um, with how I'm living that every day and how I am becoming who mm. I was created to be. Mm. Mm. You see why I love her. <laughs> and I mean, the thing with our lives, you know, how we have gotten to this point today. And I am 100% with you. I am, I, I think the same exact way, if not now, then when, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if we do not take a real good look at ourselves and how we're choosing to live and who we choose to surround ourselves with and how we choose to present ourselves to the world. Um, I mean, what's the point? What is the point? And mm -hmm. I think that this conversation with the Enneagram, um, well, let, let me, for some people that have never even heard of it, or maybe have heard the word, yes. um, it could maybe give some different connotations for somebody who doesn't know what it even means. Can right. you give just a little, uh, a brief summary of what you feel the Enneagram is? Yes. Um, it is a, well, first of all, Enneagram, I, if I'm remembering this right, Ennea means nine, mm -hmm. Latin, and then gram means graph. So, um, but the Enneagram is basically a personality typology mm. and there's, there's a lot of those out there and yeah. right? a lot of folks have heard of Myers-Briggs disc or mm. other things. And, and like, there are things like Gallup strengths finder. And I mean, just a plethora of really fabulous tools that are out there. The Enneagram for me, I'm speaking for me mm. is the tool that helped me un understand myself in ways that I never did before. It mm. helped me. I had a moment of so that's why. <laughs> oh, it was, uh -huh. it was a moment of, and I, I, I say this and it feel it sounds a little confusing. So I'll say it a little slow, but it helped me understand why I think, feel, say, and do all that I think, feel, say, and do. It just brought light to that and, and knowledge and information and insight that I did not have before, which gave me the opportunity to decide, is there anything I want to do with that? What do mm. I want to do with that? Mm. How do I want to incorporate that into my life? So the Enneagram in its simplest form definition is it's a personality typology, mm. but I will say this, it goes deeper and wider than any tool I have ever utilized. Mm. Well, the, the understanding of there are nine types, nine personality types, and you cannot be more than one. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. 
And yeah. um, they're, they're interesting because when I took some a quiz someplace and I found out my number, but it's not really encouraged, right? That you only take the, the a quiz because potentially right. you could, you could be getting a wrong answer depending on That's how right. you answered in that moment or whatever. So um, the the tool for you, I mean, right now you are, if I understand, you are actually certified now as an Enneagram facilitator. Is that correct? Yes. Which yes. is, I mean, you loved it that much, right? I loved you it thought that it much. was that important <laughs> to actually become certified, to be able to facilitate and to teach others. And that's why I bring my girl in here today. So um, tell me, like, where, where does it come from? And what where does the Enneagram even come from? Gosh. So that there's a, there's a lot behind that, but uh, I'll, I'll, instead of taking up a, a lot of time, I will say that it's, I would call it ancient. <laughs> mm. I mean, it dates back to origins rooted back into 600 BC. Okay. So it's been around for a long time. I will say that there were two points in time, and I'm going to try to remember this accurately, somewhere around the early 1900s. And then again, in the sixties, where there were a couple of folks, instrumental folks who kind of brought it back to the surface okay. and yeah. brought some new language to it, greater language that we could all understand and utilize. Um, and of late, I would say in the last probably 15 to 20 years, maybe 30 years, it's started to climb in um, just even knowing that it exists. Yeah. And it's become really, it's now even started, uh, there are consultants who will go into businesses and help managers even in their teams oh, just to, <laughs> under, to understand the Enneagram. Yeah. And to understand, so that teams can understand each other in ways um, that they, uh, that are, that are pretty, mm -hmm. I guess, as deep as they want to go. Like mm. as deep as they want to go. Well, that's what I was going to ask you because you're a corporate coach. So, I mean, you're, you're bringing this languaging into the corporate structure, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I, I do know a lot of executives uh, that I'm friends with or familiar with that have taken and have gone down the route of understanding what their number is right at the top. They got to know what their number is, but then also maybe to integrate that into the group of how can we then understand how the whole team can integrate with one another Absolutely. which is a beautiful, beautiful tool. And I mean, what a leadership thing to do because it's, I mean, this, I have a book right in front of me here. I'm just going to show it right now. It's called The Road Back to You. And I've got my cheat sheets in there. <laughs> and uh, that book was something that you recommended to me as mm -hmm. we were kind of starting our journey down the Enneagram path together, because we would meet once a month on a uh, on a call on a Zoom call with two other dear friends of ours, Terry Petrella, with her new last name. I just forgot. It. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call her still Terry Petrella and Allie Price, and we would sit and we would talk about each one of the personality types so that we can get a better understanding of it. And um, I mean, for my sake, I I have always said, you know what? We're all basically the same. We're all, we have the same needs. We have the same wants, right? We all need to be seen, valued, loved, and heard. And this book, the Enneagram has helped me to see we are so different <laughs> in how we process information <laughs> and what our motivations are. And that's ding, ding, ding. Okay. Can ding, you talk ding, about ding. that? Talk yeah, about the, that. Please. The core motivation is what it's all about, which is why you're, you're only one Enneagram type like you know once you identify what your type is and you're right assessments out there maybe 60 percent accurate some are some are more there's um the course that the, com the company that i took the course through that i got the certification through they have a, a pretty high success percentage accuracy percentage okay. on their enneagram assessment it's the one that it's the only one i found that's that high mm -hmm. so that one um is probably more more reliable than and mo many others right. but the bottom line is it's personality and it's mm -hmm. in your head. And so to understand what your Enneagram type is, you really need to kind of do the work yourself. And that book is a great book to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to understand, easy to mm -hmm. kind of just wrap your head around. But um, what I want to say is it is all about the core motivation. Mm -hmm. And so it's, we can all have, we can all be, we, I could be in a room with a bunch of twos, right? You and I are both Enneagram type twos. Mm -hmm. I could be in a room with a bunch of twos. And we might all have this different, completely different behavior around something, even though we all share the same core motivation. 
So that's mm -hmm. one thing that kind of blows your mind. The other thing that blows mm -hmm. your mind is that I could be in a room filled with all different types of Enneagram types and that we might all have the same behavior on something. And yet it's all still for the a completely different reason why. So the mm -hmm. core motivation mm -hmm. is how you really truly understand uh, so that's where it starts to understand your Enneagram type. And then you dig into the details around your Enneagram type, uh, like, like your beyond your core motivation. Like, what is that vice? Other people call it like your deadly sin. Mm -hmm. What is the thing that is your obstacle, um, that always surfaces for you? Um, and what are some of your core fears or your core desires? There's such a thing as what's your wounding childhood message. Yeah. Ooh, that's, that was that's, good. Ooh. That's the one where you read it and you mm. get a little teary because you're like, oh, oh that, sure. that really punctures your heart. Right. Uh -huh. mm. um, yeah. And then what is your, what is your longing message that you've always longed mm. to hear? So mm. when you understand those things and start to wrap your head around it, at first people are maybe a little adverse to it, especially in the business world. Right. Because mm. yes, I coach a lot of executives and leaders and the, the thing is when people ask me, what's your niche? Is it executive, you know, whatever I'm like, actually it's, I just, I coach the person Yeah. Uh, yes. because, because it's human, the person human who being. shows up, a yeah. human being shows yeah. up. And so the Enneagram has helped my clients mm -hmm. understand themselves in new ways so that they can understand. So that's why I'm the kind of leader that I am, or mm -hmm. that's why I get stuck in this rut and I don't know how to get myself out of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Does that, I think that answers your question. Oh, that was so good. Um, when, when we, when I discovered that I was a two, cause you already knew that you were a two before I knew that I was a two. Um, but when I read it, the, that core, that wounded, the childhood wounding message. Oh, it was so, it was so strange. Cause I oh, just got chills again, thinking about it. I was just yeah. reading the book and I wasn't expecting, you know, just reading the book. And all of a sudden I get to this line and I make this noise, like mm. uh, it came, like, it was like a, a guttural, sacral, like, mm, like this, all of a sudden I start bawling. Like, and I'm not a crier, you know, that it takes a good bit for me to cry. And I start bawling and I just got chills again, just thinking about how, how hard I just wanted what I wanted as a child and how, how we then as twos, how, we then become, how does this show up? How does this show up in our day to day? Because yeah. it does not go away until we start to bring that out, bring that out. And these core motivations of, I want you to be happy, but I want to be the reason, <laughs> the quote <laughs> at the beginning for number two, for us, the helper, that was, I'm like, at first I laughed when I read it and then I'm like, oh God, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I want to be the reason why you're happy. I want to help everybody. I want to do everything for others, right? Yeah, I don't At, have any needs. No, I can't, no, no. I, it's not okay expense. for me. That's right. And then That's I'm going to be mad at you that you don't know that I have needs because That's I've right. never told you them. <laughs> and I'm going to hold it against you. <laughs> okay, you can stop talking about twos now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the other ones. So there, like we said, there are nine of them. And in this book, do do they have different titles depending on who's writing about them or is it mm -hmm. is it always the uh -huh, okay yes so um it's, do you know the nine yes from this book? And, and because it's been around for a long time oh, yeah yeah um it is uh there you'll find if you like go out and google enneagram and just start looking at different websites or or different pod listening to different podcasts whatever um you'll you'll find that they're they all have you can, they make, they make sense. They they're kind of similar, but like right, the perfectionist, right. the perfectionist is the name of the Enneagram type one in the book that you referenced, mm -hmm. but there are others that call it the reformer. Okay. There are others that call it the moral perfectionist. Oh. Yeah. Moral so like, perfection. yeah, but so they're kind of similar. So I don't get necessarily, I try not to get hung up on the name of it. Like mm -hmm. as in the book, we, the two is the helper, but I've seen it also called the supportive advisor. So <laughs> It, it can be different names. So I try not to get hung up on that. I try to just get stick with the number is what makes it easy to okay. understand. Yeah. That's a common language. We all speak numbers. We mm -hmm. all understand numbers. So mm -hmm. it makes it easy for this to cross across cultures, right? Mm -hmm. You can right. understand what a number is, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's the core motivation in reading about each one that gives you some mm -hmm. pretty great insight. Mm -hmm. So good. So these, these quizzes or, um, uh, would you recommend that it's better for somebody to 
like to kind of read a book and like go through it from beginning to end and go through each number and like really feel in mm -hmm. uh, versus taking a quiz? What would you like or doing both? What would you recommend? In my opinion, because I've experienced both, mm -hmm. I would say that if you want the best possible experience discovering the Enneagram and discovering your type, then it's best for you to figure it out for yourself and don't take an assessment mm -hmm. um, because it's a personal journey. And it, it, it's not just something that you can just like take a test, check a box. Oh, okay. That's what I know I am because then you're, you're really missing the beauty mm -hmm. of all the learning that you can get from the mm -hmm. Enneagram the discovery. Right. Right. So, so the sooner you get personally invested in it, which means you're using, you're taking time to actually read a book. I recommend the one that you recommended to. I love that book. I'll put um, it back up. Yeah. The road, the road back, back to you. To you. Yep. And the, read that through. Um, you, that's how you can understand what your Enneagram type is. That's the best mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. um, there are also resources like the co-author on that, Suzanne Stabile. Mm -hmm. She does a lot of workshops and has some really fabulous recordings from a workshop she calls Know Your Number. Okay. That's an excellent, excellent um, investment. Um, they put the audio out there that you can purchase and you can listen to each Enneagram type. So I literally, I just bought all nine. I'm like, mm -hmm. I just want all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and, well, and because the, you and, need it for your business also. Right. It's mm -hmm. well, and because I want to understand my husband and my mom and my sister yeah. and my friends. Oh. And it, so, um, I, I invested in all of them. it's just such a great resource. So mm -hmm. that finding out for yourself is the yeah. bottom line. Yeah. 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 I, I, I agree with that because, you know, when you take these personality people, people love personality tests, right? I mean, everybody wants, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Okay. Tell now me. I know. <laughs> well, and it's, it's tell me who I am. It's yeah. Like, it's... Actually, why don't you discover who you are? Because <laughs> that's so much more rewarding. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. It's a little bit harder. It's a little bit more work, um, is, but, but it's then it's also, it. yeah, it is more worth it. So how do you see your life how do you feel that the Enneagram has helped you to understand yourself better as a human being? So I think probably the first thing that it's helped me uh, do is to give myself a little bit more grace. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely lowered the stress in my life mm -hmm. because I understand things in a different way. Now, it doesn't mean that there aren't moments where I'm like, I can't even remember myself. I can't even right. remember because I'm having a very, you know, something has gone down and now I'm really stressed about it. I have my husband who I've been studying this with now understands me in new ways as well. Mm, and so yeah. he knows language to use and things to, and has, and I've given him permission to speak into that moment mm. to say, what's happening in your head right now? How are your thoughts spinning around? Because that's what happens to me. I get very unproductive in my thinking. So it, it's helped me just kind of understand how my brain works, why it works that way. And I've been able to pull myself out of ruts much mm. faster than I ever did before in my life. Mm. How long have you been on this journey, the Enneagram journey? How many years we, now? We just tried to figure that out the other day. It's I think around three years. Okay. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Perfect. And I mean, the um, something that I also thought was interesting about the Enneagram is once you do this work and you read the book, be careful not to, what is it, to to guess what other people are or to say what other people are, like their yes. number, right? And why yes. is that, Jen? Why is that? Oh, gosh. That's also a big answer, but I'll try to keep it simple. Um, that's because... I like giving you the tough ones. I love it. You can't possibly be in someone's head. You cannot know what someone's core motivation is by observing their behavior. Because like mm -hmm. I said, there can be multiple Enneagram types that all have the exact same behavior on something, but it's for a completely different reason why. And that's where it, everything is rooted in the Enneagram is the why, the core motivation. So um, it's, I mean, it, it's almost like, it's almost irresistible. It's very hard to not like lean over to Dennis and say, I wonder what her Enneagram type is, you know? And like, <laughs> let's guess, you know, right. but like, I, I would never say that to someone that's because I don't ever want to taint their path. Like, mm. I don't want to influence that journey. Cause it's such a special journey to figure mm. out what your Enneagram type is and to, and to now all of a sudden start deciding, I think this is how I'm going to respond now, or this is how I'm going to choose to think about that. Now you literally go through changes and then ultimately you can experience what I think is well beyond change. And that is full on transformation. Hmm. The, the point is, you know, in this lifetime, hmm. 
are, are we're trying to integrate and, and we're trying to become who we were created. Uh, I am trying to become who I was created to be. And mm-hmm. I know that that's a lifelong journey. Yes. Um, and so um, I'm, I recognize that there are changes I need to make a little bit along the way, like what's mine to do right. in this, yeah. Staying but in then lane. there's also, you know, that spiritual side of it too, where I know that God is going to help me transform mm-hmm. because now I'm seeing things. He already knows me better than I know myself. Mm-hmm. So now I'm able to see things differently and in new lights that bring actually pain and joy Mm. at the same time. It's it's sometimes it's hard to realize it and hard to acknowledge it. But then at the same time, it's so freeing Mm. to realize it and acknowledge it. And then I, and then I'm like, yes, that's okay. I'm becoming closer to who you created me to be. Mm. This feels so good. Yeah, it does feel good. I mean, it's, you're right. It can be painful, but um, the truth will set us free. So, I mean, the truth of who we are and how maybe we have, how we mask ourselves Mm -hmm. and how we think that we need to show up in the world, or um, we're just so conditioned, so used to being and showing and presenting a certain way that we think that, oh, I couldn't possibly change, even though you know, you know, like in a, in a very guttural way that this is not really who I want to be. Right. Right. It's maybe who I thought I was, but it's, there is such grace because we can change and we are, it is incumbent upon us. Once we learn something so beautiful, like this new languaging of understanding what your number is, how you get the tools to understand, well, okay, well, where am I right now? Right now, I'm not really, I'm an unhealthy two, and I'm going to an average two, and then I want to be a healthy two. And what what can that look like? Exactly. And, the- and you know, you know, when you are an unhealthy two, trust me, yes, I, I identified quickly with that. I'm like, yes. oh my gosh, I'm still there. That's exactly yeah. where I am. But and most of us live here. our, <laughs> now, you know, and most of us live our lives in average. It's interesting what you were saying reminded me that, you know, the theory behind this with the Enneagram, the theory is that in childhood, um, we start to react to our discovering that the world is, is scary and, and it's, it can be an unkind place. Mm. And what happens to us in childhood is we start to adjust mm. ourselves and we develop personality mm because we're unlikely to accept our true self because Mm. the world doesn't necessarily accept our true self. Mm. So we all start building these personalities around us. So while the Enneagram is a a personality typology, the goal that it helps you strive toward is what I would call your essence, your Mm. integration, Mm. integration with true self. Mm. Essence, integration. Essence. Essence. Yeah. Big words, beautiful words. And I was just reading something from uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza about our personalities become our personal realities. Yep. And so I, just, I thought about that for our childhood, you know, how, how do you accommodate? How do we accommodate for others? And we learned real fast that yeah. how do we get what we, how do we get our needs met? Well, we get our needs. We as twos got our needs met by figuring out well, if I help somebody, if I do this, then I get the love that I'm seeking, right? And we we all have our, uh, each one of these personality types has their own way of what they needed and how they get what they need. That's and right. that's why this is, uh, it's such a beautiful way to see yourself, like the mirroring, right? I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that we are all mirrors of one another. And that when we get triggered or upset by something somebody else does, of course, we recognize it because we do it ourselves or uh, Mm -hmm. we recognize ourselves in the action or the reaction. And uh, this for me has been a a wonderful, wonderful tool to help me understand that I'm not broken. Mm -hmm. I'm not a weirdo because I, you know, everything's so nicey, nicey until you try to, you threaten me, you threaten somebody in my family. And all of a sudden that nicey, nicey becomes like, like, how can that be? What is, well, to actually have it described in the book, there's a reason for it. We do it for a reason. And the, here's the thing that I love about what you just said is what you, what here, here's what you didn't say. You didn't use the Enneagram as an excuse for your (laughs) behavior or thoughts. Like, so that's something that I would caution everyone is like, Embrace this thing and allow it to 
bring up changes you need to make so that you can actually experience transformation Mm -hmm. and become, don't use it as an excuse and don't use it, uh, use somebody's Enneagram type against them. Like this is all, this is all how you can love more, love Mm -hmm. better, understand Mm -hmm. more, understand Mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. And I think the world needs some more of that. Indeed. Indeed, my sister. Okay. Our time is up. I told you it was going to go fast. So fast. (laughs) It goes so fast. Do you have any last minute tips or thoughts or anything that you'd like to share with whomever is listening today? Mm. I think the thing that is on my heart to share is that if you're, um, most of us are asleep to to who it is, to to what that's really, that who it is that we really are. And um, there is goodness and, and, and beauty inside of you Mm -hmm. that was created in you from the beginning. And so don't be afraid to discover that just because it feels different. We, we all like same, we all like to, uh, we feel like we fit in. Uh So I would just, I would just encourage folks to wake up Mm -hmm. and, and don't, don't be asleep. And it's okay to discover this because on the other side of what you learn ongoing, it doesn't end on the other side of every learn is more peace and more joy and more true fulfillment in life because you're becoming closer to you, to your, who you are. Yeah. And that's, that's what the movement of more moss to the people is about coming back to self, coming back to center, coming back to source, coming back to understanding who we are. And when we are sleeping Really, when we have our eyes closed or when we have our you know heads in the sand, it's uh, it might be comforting, but really, is it? I mean, it's a, it's almost like a false sense of comfort. That's, that's yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. So I I know I want to have you back. I would love to do something with all of the nine personalities. Great idea. With you one day, we're gonna figure something out. I know it. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, my beautiful friend, for your time and your knowledge, your wisdom, your heart. Thank you for having me. I love you. I love you. I love you. Love you. Love you. I'll talk to you soon, honey. Okay.